Pride Month. Interesting that when you hear that, you automatically know that they're talking about LGBT pride. Because that's really just about the only thing that someone can say they have pride in and not be viewed as bigoted somehow. Kind of interesting. Anyway, as I've said, I don't have a problem with that show Arthur, that kids show Arthur depicting a marriage between two men because it's just about love and a marriage. It's not talking about sexuality or sex or any of that. It's just these people are getting married. It's a different thing altogether. For stores for the past two years, like Target, selling gay pride clothing for children. Even having things like out and proud written on the clothing that's geared towards children, young children. Now, either these children know about what it means already, or they don't know what it means, and the parents are getting it for them so they can become political pawns. I think that's a little disturbing. But the other thing that's kind of disturbing about a lot of this is this push towards this pride, it's making it so people don't want to be normal. Because being normal is mundane. And to be part of the LGBT community, well, that's how you're special. That's how you can, you can be extraordinary. And I just kind of wonder what kind of message that pushes the people. This sort of thing would most certainly increase trans trending, particularly in the non-binary variety. You know, oh, you don't fit the, the gender role of a man? You don't fit the gender role of a woman? Well, you're, you're gender fluid. You're non-binary. So you can be part of the good group, too. It's just weird. Now, I mean, stores can sell what they want. That's their choice, and the market will decide on that in that regard. But what message is this sending? Should it not? Should it be considered mundane? Should it be considered, you know, kind of sad and pathetic to be normal? Now you could say, well, other groups can celebrate and have pride in, their, in themselves. And I'm like, really? How about if it's the group that's in the majority? How about if it's white people that want to take pride in something? How about men wanting to take pride? How about straight people? What if they want to take pride? Well, you don't need that because cis-heteronormativity, the patriarchy. And it's just like, but so, it's, it's a catch-22. It essentially means, kind of in some ways, it's sending a message that you're bad if you are part of the majority group, because everything's geared around you. That's the attitude. I think that's kind of messed up. That's the message it sends. Do, do we want to send kids that kind of message? Teach them that sort of thing? Teach them about identity politics from a young age? That doesn't seem right. So again, you know, I don't have a problem with a kid's show depicting a marriage between two men. I don't think that should be much of an issue. But to essentially teach and push this idea that if you're LGBT, you're somehow more valuable than if you're not, is kind of messed up. You can say, well, we're trying to push against bigotry. It's just like, well, that's not how you do it. That's, that's not the way you do it. Just like the way to solve racism is not with more racism. You don't solve sexism with more sexism. You don't solve homophobia with heterophobia. You don't solve, you know, phobia towards the LGBT with phobia towards the majority demographic. It just doesn't work. 
You can say, well, this, this isn't really phobia. Well, it, I guess technically it's not a phobia. It's just this idea that if you're if if you're of the majority demographic, you're mundane. You know, most people want to be special. And when we're teaching kids that the, the way that you can be special is to be part of the LGBT, yeah, what, what kind of message is that? Anyway. <laughs>